Hey guys, so today we're talking spring flowers. I wanted to show you some of the first spring flowers that come up on the farm here at Cranberry Fields Flower Farm. If we haven't met yet, it's nice to meet you. My name is Kelly Lehman and I'm the owner of Cranberry Fields Flower Farm. So we're gonna be talking daffodils and tulips and creeping flocks. And so let's dive right in and take a look at what's blooming in spring. This is creeping phlox and it's kind of like ground cover doesn't get too high just a few inches just be careful though if you plant this in your landscaping it is a perennial which is great it means it comes back every year but if you weed this by accident at the end of the season it won't come back and I've done that before because what happens is at the end of spring these beautiful petals start to fall off and you just have this green uh, like these little green, you know, stems left over. And it looks a little weed-like in your gardens. So be careful that you don't pluck these guys out, because uh, if you do, they won't come back. So this is Phlox. Really pretty. Come on, Lucy. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Here are some tulips. And these are one of the first spring flowers that we see all the time. I hope you can hear the birds in the background. And I don't have too many tulips here because my rabbits always eat them. Uh, but what we did do is we asked our flower tribe for some suggestions on what they do to keep back the rabbits from their tulips. And they brought up everything from sprinkling dog hair or human hair around them. So I tried that. I have a little bit of Lucy's hair, our Bernese Mountain Dog's hair down here. Some people use liquid fence. Some people use cayenne pepper. Um, a lot of people use Irish Spring soap shavings to get rid of their rabbits, believe it or not. You just sprinkle some Irish Spring soap around uh, here and apparently the rabbits and the deer don't like it. So that's a quick tip. And we took a trip to um, Holland Ridge Farms in Cream Ridge, New Jersey and we were fortunate enough to see their tulip festival. So we're going to show you some of those pictures. It's absolutely amazing colors are outstanding and they also have what's called the sunflower festival in fall so if you're near cream ridge new jersey so worth the trip to see the tulips at holland ridge farms and we'll put a link to that in our descriptions these are called double daffodils they have double the petals sometimes even triple the petals of a regular single cupped daffodil they almost look like peonies, but they're not. These are real daffies. We have a number of rows of these guys coming up. They come back every year. You just plant them in the fall and then they come back. And what's nice is that the deer and the rabbits, they stay away because they have something inside their stems and inside the flower head and inside their bulb called lycorine that's kind of like a toxic chemical that upsets the stomachs of animals. So it makes them nauseous, it makes them uh, not feel so good, so they stay away. So this is a great pest-free flower to have. And they come in all different colors, these double daffies. Let me give you some different views here. They come in very pale shades, they come in vibrant shades, they come in these, like this double yellow. So double daffodils are the way to go for me. And the double daffodils also have a really great base life. If you're cutting your daffodils for a long base life, you want to make a really nice arrangement out of them for your house or your family, it's best to cut them when they're at this stage. They're just starting to burst open because what happens is when you cut them when they're totally open already, like this, they're only going to last in the vase for like one or two days. But if you cut them when they're at this stage and you put them in water and you keep them cool, they'll last a lot longer. And that's pretty much the case with most fresh cut flowers. Cut them when they're just starting to open, put them in water and keep them in a cool place and you'll have much longer vase life than if you cut them when they were fully open. Like this beauty. Oh, that is a beauty. Here's another double daffy. This guy's a paler uh, version, almost like a, a blanc, nice and white.
more single cupped daffodils. These guys are also pale, kind of like white, that whitish look. Very pretty, very peaceful. I know we're used to seeing most daffodils in those bright orange and yellow colors, but the white ones are, are just as pretty. So soft and delicate. I love planting daffodils in different color groupings. So they look really great when they're all together in one bunch, one color, but they also look super pretty when there's a whole different variety of them. So we've got some really bright double daffies here mixed in with some, almost like a bicolor daffy. It has kind of like the whitish and the yellow mixed together. Really pretty combination in the field and in the vase. And once again, guys, super long vase life with your double daffies. These are called hellebores. They're a beautiful spring plant, and these gals bloom even before the daffodils. They're the first ones that bloom here on my property. We're in a zone six planting area, and they come in all different colors. So this guy's purple, and it stands about, I'd say probably about two feet tall, and they love partial shade. So I have uh, these guys situated right underneath my lilac tree. So it gets kind of like morning sun, and when it was in, in full bloom, this lilac tree wasn't covered with leaves yet. So it had a lot more sunshine when it was blooming in full bloom probably about three weeks ago. And now the lilac kind of covered it up, but that's okay because it's done blooming and it gets enough sun and dappled, da dappled sunlight, and then it likes the shade. But I want to show you some of the colors that these hellebores come in. So this guy's purple and this whole bush was covered with it before. It also comes in shades of green, and notice the petal difference. So this guy's a much different petal than these guys. These are almost like a deep green. And let me get into here to show you this bloom, because it's amazingly beautiful. So it's a really deep green. And this was covered with tons and tons of these uh, blooms earlier in the spring. So beautiful flower. Not many people uh, I hear talking about them as much as the daffodils and the tulips, but they're definitely a great flower to have for spring if you have places that have some shade. Hellebores. Okay. Now I know this isn't a flower, but how could you resist putting these lilac blooms in a flower arrangement? So I thought I'd throw these in on our spring flower tour. Uh, these are white lilacs. And the trick to getting a longer vase life from lilacs is to know that they grow on what's called woody stems. So when you're cutting your lilacs, you have a stem that looks like this, and it's that, you know, it's wood. It's actually from like a shrub. So you're gonna cut the you're gonna cut it on a diagonal, and you might even give it like a little bit of a smash with like a meat hammer to kind of loosen up uh, where the water goes. It's kind of gonna loosen up some of these veins if you give it like a little whack with the meat hammer and then you stick it in your vase. And that's just a quick little florist power tip on how to get longer vase life from your lilacs. So, and let me just show you what the purple guys look like. So once again, guys, these are on a, a shrub, you know, a lilac bush, but I have to show them to you because they're so pretty and they smell absolutely amazing. So there's all different varieties. Some have uh, smaller, more delicate little petals and some of them have big giant purple ones, like the ones you probably saw on like your grandmother's gardens. Those are called common lilacs. This is a more delicate version. Purple lilacs. Hey guys, so I hope you loved our spring flower talk today. And um, if you'd like, subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can hit the bell notification so that the next time we put new tips up, you'll be one of the first to know. And I'm also gonna put the flower names that we talked about in the descriptions below, just as like a little cheat sheet in case you guys wanna come back and take a look at some of the names that we talked about. And I'll also put some links to our cranberryfields.com blog page and we also ship our nationwide bouquets. So I'll put that information there too and our other social media links. So have a great day, everybody.